super early morning. And honestly, the sun's like right in my face. So sorry about that. And there was no point in blow drying my hair because it is so humid out here where we have had that time in June where it's just pop up rain and then just constant storms and then it turns back to 90 and then it's it's just a sauna but um so you're going to be seeing this I haven't been out here in two or three days because Bryce has been at aquarium camp and we've been rushing around we've had plans with friends it's been pretty hectic so I've not been out here to see what's going on so you're going to be seeing what I'm seeing for the first time um you know right now and so this is early morning I'm hoping to catch some of the birds and things out and just kind of see a bunch of the little things and see all the growth that's going on with this so here we go. Look at those beans. Um, a bunch of these look like I could harvest them. Um, I mean, yeah, there's some up in there. Oh yeah, these are ready for harvest. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be on the agenda. Not today, because we've got two different pool parties today, um, having children. Like all the things. Now this is different. This is dying back, and I don't know if that's a sign that we may be ready to get some of those. I'm gonna leave it alone. Supposedly, you're supposed to let them die back, and when they have died back, they are, you know, ready to dig the potatoes up. But sometimes potatoes have problems just because they have problems. And oh my God, look at all this. I haven't been able to spray BT on these because of the um the rain it just washes it right off but on the positive you see down there i'm getting a bulb for a karabi i'm just frustrated because these caterpillars are eating the heck out of these things after the dew dries i may try to spray some more now some of these are coming back um and i was thinking about harvesting some of the kale go ahead and get some more of the kale in the freezer um we've got a deep freeze set up now so i can feel like i can save more of the harvest of things um, I didn't want a ton of things out in the, um, in our small freezer. And I'm thinking of harvesting that one jalapeno right there just so that the plant can grow some more. But yeah, the peppers are doing good. Um, they have not liked all this excess rain, I'm sure. Dragon tongue beans are doing their thing in this barrel, doing really well. And oh my goodness, guys, at this lettuce. Um, I'm actually going to harvest some of the lettuce and um, maybe make BLTs this morning. Um, carrot is going to seed back there. And the Brussels sprouts are looking good over here. Well, one of, all of them but one. Um, but yeah, like, look at that back there. Oh, look, it's one of those, uh, I think that one's a peaches and cream nasturtium. So it's blooming. Again, I put a bunch of those. So we're gonna, I've been pulling these up just by the roots and then, like what I do, sorry, I'm holding the camera. I break the bottom off, check the roots out of the yard. Really, I could put those on the compost if I wanted to, and then I just throw those in the basket. Um, but yeah, there, there's a bunch of these that are just absolutely huge, and some of them are getting like gross, and I think it's just because of slugs getting in them. But these are very pretty. Um, you guys know of a way to store lettuce without it getting weird i'm all ears but i don't oh i have a coffee delivery <gasps> coffee thank you honey yeah <laughs> love you coffee now totally to like rearrange my hands but yeah it's it is so stinking humid everything is humid right now and the plants some plants like that other plants do not so again i'm gonna be checking on a lot of that the peas are pretty much done for i've been trying to leave some out here to dry because um i want to collect seeds from these and keep the seeds but it's been so moist, they've not been able to dry. I mean, look at all these mushrooms. Yeah, all those mushrooms. But also look at all those new little okra coming up where I took the turnips out. Yeah, you'll notice the, the turnips are absolutely gone. Um, I'm going to set my coffee down. And we're going to check the strawberries because look over there. 
I feel like there are a ton of strawberries to harvest. Um, so, yeah. Set the basket down. And these have not been munched on. The positive. That one could be about ready. I mean, you see how it's spreading, but you also see how the oregano has like taken over. Oh, look at this one. Oh, and for that one to be sitting on the ground, it wasn't munched on. I'm shocked. Um, little red one in there. Any more back in there? Oh, there's one hiding in the leaves. It's a bed going down me. Yeah, look at all those trig. Ironically, he, he was so just, oh, my strawberries. Yay, my strawberries. And now he, like, refuses to eat them. And I don't understand why. <laughs> I mean, he goes through spells like that where he just changes his mind about stuff and it's just like nope not gonna do it anymore and uh i don't know why but okay but yeah so changes to this garden obviously the turnips are out you see all the tall things that were growing in between those were the okra that i tried a, a, um a an experiment with to see if i could get the okra to grow in between the turnips um they obviously some of them got very uh, leggy and they did not grow like they were supposed to so i don't know how well they're going to produce so i interspersed other okra like new fresh okra some of them are obviously doing okay and i feel like oh it was focusing on my finger um some of them are doing okay back in there um those back in there are okra as well like these little ones because um like filling this whole bed with okra obviously that's basil purple basil basil and basil um and so there's also some radishes right in through there those are the last of those kinds of things and they you can see i'll show you a close-up of them you can see how mottled they are this is all the flea beetles have left to eat and so they have like moved over to this now granted it's the first i've seen of this damage to okra um they typically don't eat okra see the rest of these are are like really healthy but i'm thinking once i take the rest of these out and these will probably come out when i get a chance to actually do some maintenance out here and once those come out hopefully that will stop the flea beetle infestation but yeah these we've already got little baby beans on and flowers and i just seen a bee oh no that was a wasp pollinating right there um but yeah you see this sorry it's like in my in my eyes i will have to wind those around but yeah obviously these are all dying off all these peas i've left a few of the pods on um like out back in there and i thought it had some on this side too but just i'm trying to leave them right here so that they can dry and i can get those seeds out of there i also because it has been so moist i was afraid they would mold and not not dry properly because of how rainy it has been and so i did take a few inside and um we'll have them kind of set in a dark corner to let them dry um hopefully they will still be um productive seeds i'm not sure because i i took them in oh, oh. Just make sure i didn't step in an anthill they are awful after we've had this much rain like the first few days we have to go out and treat the yard pretty bad but yeah the beans these peas are going to come out and then sorry i've got a bug crawling up the other half of my arm um and then more beans are going to go in here it's like a succession so so this wall will eventually be full um and so oh look at this look at this look at this all the things i'm so excited um the rattlesnake beans are climbing here up to here obviously and some of them need a little bit of assistance but that's okay they, we all need a little bit of assistance every now and then and this little guy i swear he's like climbing the, the wrong way like come on dude stay in your lane you got your own lane 
So, sorry, and I'm totally not paying attention to the lens of my camera. Sorry. And, but yeah, they're growing. This will eventually be like the bean wall, and they will be all the way up over. Um, the look at these. These spaghetti squash. I mean, I've got one going there. Tons of blooms. I mean, if I wanted to try some recipes with the blooms, like, this is totally an option. Um, and you see how they are spreading out. They, that one was attacking my tomato plant. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna not do that. Um, yeah, it's gonna not do that. We're gonna, I'll have to come back and get more of that later, but look at all those. Black midnight snacks. Now, I've been feeling of those periodically. I did take one of those to try and see if it was ready to harvest and it was not um it was still really green on the inside and just not that tasty at all um and so yeah i i'm gonna have to wait and see what they do those kinds of things but yeah this no nope, not not your trellis not your trellis this is your trellis <laughs> again stay in your lane <laughs> So, because the spaghetti squash totally will take off and it will take over. It took over the bean wall last year. Um, I was shocked at how much, like, it climbed. And that's why I'm doing it on a trellis this year. Look at that big old flame. I was trying to look, see if I had any more fruit setting down in there. But it's early yet. I mean, I think there's another one back in there. I don't know if you can see it in the camera because the sun's in my eyes. Look at this. Um, these are melons. And then these are the nasturtiums. I don't know if these are blooming in there. I can't see them. These are more melons. And obviously the spaghetti squash is coming out this way. I'm fixing to have to grab that one and run him back up the trellis. The cucumbers are vining and pitting out. Um, I wonder if I have any baby cucumbers on this one yet. Like this one is uh, was getting froggy. There's one. There's a bloom there. Okay. No real baby cucumbers on that yet. But it's early. Um, the tomatoes. I don't know watching them because it's time for hornworm like it's that time of year other places are already getting many issues with hornworm and so i've been really watching that now look at this survivor this guy is one of them that was killed in the frost and look how much he has grown he's gonna put tomatoes on and he's gonna be amazing um speaking of tomatoes cluster down in there they look so healthy and happy i've got a big cluster over there um and look at these ground cherries the ground cherries have actually started oh there's one started dropping some and so they are like this is what they look like they look like little like almost like lanterns and you want the husks to be dry and you pull them open. These are Aunt Molly's ground cherries. And they're supposed to be really yellow. They're supposed to be yellow like this. You peel that back. You see that little bead? And, see? and it, it's spread so much because of the rain. But it tastes like a skittle. Legit. Like a skittle. Like a yellow skittle. It is, they, they are so good. They are candy, basically. Um, Bryce has eaten one or two of them now, and he has enjoyed them. He really likes them. So, these are definitely going to be something for the kids that stay in the garden. Plus, I hear that they self-seed <laughs> really well. So, once you get them established, it's kind of hard to get rid of them. So, I guess that's a positive. It'll come back every year. So, but we'll see if there's any more down here. Let's look. You always check them on the ground. You never eat them off the plant. Um, they are a nightshade family member and they can be poisonous. There are other um, varieties of those that are poisonous. So you do not just want to go eating them. If you are not 100% positive on what you are eating. Um, especially since some of these grow wild in my area. They may grow wild here but they're not the same type. This one needs to be put in a tomato cage. But look at him. That's the black beauty. That's the surprise. Look at the straps on that one. In there. 
so that one that one's doing its thing and but yeah i need to i've got i had him staked up but i need to put him in a tomato cage and i'm gonna have to rain that spaghetti squash in because it's it's trying to get out into the other bed it can't do that oh look here's another this one apparently is a peaches and cream too i mixed all my seeds up so i really have no idea what colors they are um but okay so acorn squash supposedly is supposed to climb um yeah i don't know about you but this thing's bushing and it's not climbing um and so there's a lot of stuff going on in a very small space but i have an i have a couple of little acorn squashes see that one right there it's got fruit on it this big yellow one has got fruit on it which we are this is a male flower we're gonna kind of help the bees we're gonna take kind of help the bees a little bit and just rub the pollen down in the flower down in there and yuck and hopefully that one will produce a fruit but yeah i've already got a couple down in there um they are trying to fruit now these are not climbing like traditional beans are supposed to climb but they are putting on growth and they are like coming up this trellis now thank goodness um because i was like i was told that these climb they're supposed to climb and they're not doing anything so but on the positive let's see if we can find one of my helpers so obviously we were having i was having such an aphid problem with this i put the kids on a mission and i basically was like look any ladybugs that you guys find in the yard bring them and put them on these plants and the other day when i was out here i found a ladybug on it doing her job and she the aphids are almost non-existent on them now um obviously corn that corn is growing and healthy and happy um so i'm glad of that now this is the spaceship squash but it's like the pie pie patty squash i don't know if it's putting on any any fruit yet now i've also got little bitty tiny basils growing in there but because it's not been it's been too wet they've not been growing have any fruit setting down there? Oh, I hear a little bee. Um, I don't. You guys have to tell me if you see anything on the on the video because I'm not. Like it's bushy in there. They've gotten big, like overnight. And I can't tell. Oh my goodness! Look at that big old bloom. Isn't it pretty? Um. Yeah, I don't see a whole lot of female flowers on these. Um, so, I don't know yet. I mean, obviously, we'll give them time, but I don't know. But yeah, they're, they're filling up the garden space. Everything's kind of doing what it's supposed to be doing. That's just a mess in there, and it is every year. But I leave it alone, and I let it go to flower, and I let it go to seed. The only time I regretted that was the time I found a huge wasp nest in there um, in the fall when I went to clear it out. But, I mean, the positives of it is, I don't know if you can see all the way over there, but there's like three or four bees hanging out over there. Um, speaking of wasps, there's one like flying around that probably has a nest in there that I'm not going to be happy to find later. But, hey, it's part of having a, a garden and wildlife and that kind of thing. So, all right. Um, let's grab my coffee. Ah, there's more of the pods that I'm letting dry in there. Let's grab my coffee and we'll walk down to where the pumpkins and stuff are. So. Oh my god. Oh, the condensation. Like all the condensation. It's been awful. Good weather for gardens. But there are mushrooms everywhere. Everything's wet. I mean, I'm just out here barefoot because there's, there's a point. Like you would just soak through your shoes and everything um the pumpkins are absolutely taking off we have tons and tons of pumpkins down here that i think i will probably harvest some of them young and try you know like some fried pumpkin and things like that or baked pumpkin and um a little recipes that i've seen that you use the small like um 
young pumpkins to do. And so we're gonna we're gonna look at these and see what we see. Let's see if I can find a spot to set my coffee down so I don't dump it out everywhere. But look at this magnificence. In the early morning sun, those huge mammoth sunflowers back there are just getting bigger and bigger. And look at those pumpkins. I mean, we gave them, sorry, I'm setting my coffee down. We gave them some serious space and they are, I mean, just bleeding over. Uh, they, oh my goodness, look at him. Look at these, there's three right here. These really big ones. Um, they're still down in there. Obviously, the big blooms that are coming out of the top. Um, look at that green one. He is a real dark baby one of Bryce's. Because Bryce's little pumpkin that he grew was so green, it was black. Oh my goodness, look down in there. Look at all those blooms. This is where I need to be harvesting blooms if I'm going to eat the blooms. It's pushing the sunflowers out. I mean, it's... It is getting out of hand. Um, and I can hear the bees. I can't really see the bees very well. Oh, there's one over there. But yeah, it's it's spreading. And look at these big sunflowers. These sunflowers are almost as tall as me at this point. Like, they are growing fast, like quick and heavy. Oh, oh, oh there's one. They're getting down in there. Yeah, the bumblebee butt. Oh, no, there's another one. Oh God, oh, there's one of our honeybees. Do your job, ladies. See our honeybees? Those are ones from the hives. Those are Italian honeybees. Um, and, oh, there's another little pumpkin. Sorry, oh God, it's everywhere. It is everywhere, all down in there, everywhere. And like, spalling out through here. Now these are watermelons. Um, and the watermelons have just really took off because of all the wet we've had. Um, they're really doing their thing. Oh, I'm back at the pumpkins. Sorry, guys. I'm just enamored with all the bee activity going on in this. Oh, look at him down in there. All the bee activity. But yeah, there's pumpkins down in there. Um, yeah, I will probably. Oh, look, there's one. I'll probably have to come out here at some point and um, thin some of this, like take some leaves out. I mean, I've just let, I've been, the whole experiment with this was to um, let them grow wild and just kind of see what they do because they are massive and this was the bottom garden. I'm not really doing much with it other than just letting this stuff take off. But yeah, that this is the watermelons that are growing and these are the butternut squash and they're starting to meet in the middle which is the plan is for them to fill this entire space let's see i can't i'll have to look and see they're, they're putting on blooms in there but i'm not sure if i have any fruit on them yet um yeah let's look down in here yeah we have plenty of male blooms um i don't think the female ones are opening yet because usually the female ones are the ones that are like way out here. Um, and so I don't, I don't see any of the female ones that are, that are opening yet. Which again, that's okay. I mean, it's spreading. It's getting big. It will eventually put on fruit at points. And like I've been having to push this sucker back in because he's coming out on this side pretty hard and heavy. I was looking, yeah, let's see, he's like escaping out here, but yeah, like things I've been watching for with these, and I don't want to jinx myself, um, I have been, oh my goodness, look at those sunflowers, and I love the purple hue to these, I think these are going to be the real, real dark ones, um, you see how these have the real, real green stems, um, these have like a purple tinge under their skin. They actually have this like hairy surface to them, but they're more purple. But also you can see better from this angle, or at least I hope you can without the sun. You see how that thing's putting off all those little side shoots? 
in the in the elbows of the plant you can break those off and the plant will grow faster and probably taller but i'm not it's not a huge deal to me um because it'll put on blooms in each one of those little shoots like see here's a good example of it like this is the elbow of the plant and then this is the shoot if this was a tomato you would call this a sucker um but in this case the main branch has kind of petered out and this is the tall strong branch that's actually putting on the head that's going to be the sunflower and so i don't like doing like pruning the sunflowers because i figure they're big they're massive i'm not really producing them for food or you know productivity they're mainly for the bees and the birds and things so i let them do their own thing i let them look how many this one's got um i mean it's in every cook of that one has got them but really they're out here for the bees and the birds and I'm letting them do their own thing. And the more flowers that they produce, the more that they feed our happy little insects that are out here. Bumbly bee, you probably should go to the other plants. That That's not, <laughs> there's not anything on that one yet. Oh my goodness, that's a different kind of bee. Look at that one. And I hope that this is focusing on things because obviously the plants are moving. Everything's moving. Um, and so, I don't know how much it's focusing, but I'm just enamored with all of the growth of these pumpkins. And this was all from Bryce's little pumpkin that he grew last year. Oh my God, I just noticed this again. These bugs are absolutely killing me. Does anybody know what these things are? I need to look them up. That, that right there. He, I found three or four of them on my sunflower plant the other day. And I want rid of them. Obviously, they fly, so like it's really hard to get rid of them. But I don't know what they're doing on my plants. I know that when sunflowers bloom, they uh, horribly attract stink bugs. I'm talking like ridiculous amounts of stink bugs. And they like to use sunflowers to breed on. And so your sunflowers, like if you go out there and their heads are drooping over and you're not careful, they you'll walk under it and then like a dozen of the stink bugs will fall on your head. And it's, it's pretty stinking and gross. I don't like it. Um, but uh, another reason why they're kind of planted out here and not in the garden where I'm going to be picking beans. <laughs> and so, um, but yeah, like that's usually happens after they've bloomed and they're putting out their pollen and stuff. So I don't know what that guy thinks he's doing hanging out out there because he looks like a huge stink bug, but he's not. He's a lot bigger than the normal ones. So I really have no idea what he is what he's doing well, he needs to leave my stuff alone down there i'm dealing with enough pests <laughs> so anyway i'm gonna start training some of these crazy beans back onto their trellis look at this mess i'm gonna go pick some red beans well no i think i'm gonna pick the red beans tomorrow because i'm not gonna have time to pick them today and i want them to be fresh so i'm gonna wait and not do that i'm not gonna do that but i've got to get some of these peeps back in their lanes on their trellises because the spaghetti squash in these beans are getting out of hand. Look at that. Just a waving in the wind out through there. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good morning.